Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Charmed Rewind. We're back. We're again. back. Get your chips ready. <laughs> sit lazily on the couch and oh, prepare. Am I for... ever ready for that? <laughs> <laughs> well, this episode of Charmed was. Uh, 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 I'm gonna be thirsty uh, real soon, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> well, sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we are doing Season 3, Episode 18, Sin Francisco. This was a surprise runaway winner in the poll. <laughs> this got nearly 50% of the votes, and there was the three faces of Phoebe on there. That's the one where she summons her old and young self, and then there's three times, there are two times the Phoebe. Or no, three times. Three, three times. times the Phoebe. <laughs> back <laughs> yeah i'm glad we got this one. i was i thought for sure that would win but no it was a real it tanked mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they, you know they were sold on lazy leo lazy leo is a great episode yeah so. they're like lazy leo get your votes in and they had like a campaign leo <laughs> i'm glad we got to watch lazy leo it's nice to see an episode where leo comes out on top right because it's not usually usually it's like he wants mm. to be on top <laughs> I'm sure he was watching Top Model during his <laughs> binging of uh, John Wayne movies and public domain stuff. <laughs> In between the scenes they couldn't show. Yeah. <laughs> they could have, right? Because it was on the WB at that point, right? No, it was UPN. It wasn't until the CW merger. It was CW. Mm. Never mind. It was a rival <laughs> Not network allowed. at that point. <laughs> Anyway, anything else you want to say about uh, Charmed or anything before we get into Let's it? Send into it. All right. <laughs> so uh, the opening is Prue and a curly-haired Phoebe walking on the sidewalk. This wasn't usual for her having a hair this curly. But mm -hmm. I thought it looked cute, they unlike some other things in this Max episode. Max <laughs> foot room in this shot. Very strange looking shot where they yeah. get out of the car and... It's a lot of bottom heavy on the frame. Strange. Yeah, they start with like um, just the extras walking on the street or on the, the sidewalk and then the car pulling up and like they just focus on the feet at first. Uh, it feels like a, a strangely ambitious outdoor shot compared to some stuff they do later. Yes. I mean, it didn't look great, it's just but a I mean like them filming shot to outside. Me, but... Yeah, <laughs> it looked almost like it was at a different frame rate, but I don't, I don't know if that's just our TV or not. I didn't notice it looking that weird frame rate wise. Anyway, this is all not that interesting. <laughs> so anyway, they're uh, talking about why they're there because this is TV land where you discuss why you've come someplace after you've arrived. Mm -hmm. And uh, no Pru one knows why they're going anywhere at yeah, any time. They're like, get in the car, okay? And they silence. Sit silent. <laughs> why so, did we come here? <laughs> <laughs> so Prue uh, is uh, they're looking for something, and she can't describe what it is they're looking for. She just says an evilly thing. Um, she tells Phoebe that she was scrying for supernatural activity, and that's how she discovered, uh, that this evil -y thing was around. To which Phoebe complains that she's searching out evil. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, heaven forbid one of you be proactive about anything. Yeah, it's well, she funny. acts like this is, like, an unhealthy thing to do. Like, she's yeah. just like, what happened to balance? You're looking for trouble now? Eh. You could save people before they get killed? Oh, that'd be terrible. As the Charmed Ones, you should never do that. Remember when Phoebe used to care about this stuff? <laughs> like, season one, and then it was done for her? Mm-hmm. It, it's funny, because the Charmed Ones are really reactionary characters, except, you know, when you have Peru around. <laughs> sometimes she's proactive about stuff. She's leading the charge even before the yeah. Pride stuff in this episode. Mm-hmm. You know, they say the sins seek out the most compatible host or whatever. For it, them. What they're predisposed to. Right. Yeah. Predisposed to evil. Yeah. <laughs> they're genetically predisposed to pride, <laughs> lust, and yeah. sloth, and etc. Um, so, yeah, uh, Phoebe also complains that she's been dragged along to this before she knows about the, the yeah, scrying thing. A because taste she's, of things to come. Yeah, yeah, she's like, I can't believe that you, you got me to come here when I could be procrastinating school stuff. <laughs> So, pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, uh, she's like, well, Prue, you wanted more balance in your life. Why are you doing this? Uh, helping innocence is the opposite of balance, apparently. <laughs> uh, Prue points out that she just shot a magazine cover and had a date. So, mm -hmm. I think it's fine to start seeking out evil. She's living a pretty full life. Phoebe. Really? 
<laughs> she's doing better. She's doing what Phoebe would do later, but she'd be like, I have all these shoots and I'm going to do all this stuff. Yeah. I'm so famous. She's <laughs> like, I did something on me time. Now I'm trying to save people before they get killed. Yeah. <gasps> like she's doing a lot better at this, like magic versus life stuff than her sisters do through the entirety yeah, of this just show. I'll complain whenever anything comes up later. <laughs> yeah. Um, Phoebe sarcastically calls Prue her typical, your typical everyday Cosmo girl. <laughs> uh, ironically thinking of the future episode where Phoebe has like a uh, interview with Cosmo mm -hmm. and she's on their cover and she's got all these dates and all uh, these things going on. Dates. Lots and lots of dates. Because she's so famous. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, eh, you, you typical, eh, whatever. Anyway, I'm a famous <laughs> love advice columnist. <laughs> So, uh, Prue is apparently focusing too much on fighting demons because when both of her sisters hooked up with their cool supernatural dudes, so yeah, she thinks that they don't need her anymore because yeah, I guess the strong men will protect them or something. <laughs> I don't know. She forgets the power of three is kind of essential for all three of them until, you know, they had that other sister as a backup. <laughs> no. Um, but Phoebe reassures her. By saying that's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing that we don't need no, you anymore, need you. Prue. <laughs> also foreshadowing to the end of the season. <laughs> yeah. No, like, don't worry, we'll always need you. Mm -hmm. It's good that we have extra help, but you're always going to be our sister. It's, no, it's a good thing that we don't need you anymore, <laughs> Prue. <laughs> it's really funny, though, because two seconds later, Phoebe's like, this is why I need you. Yeah. Oh, th <laughs> that whole thing is so dumb. <laughs> So, uh, cut to a couple of dumpsters. <laughs> uh, Prue blasts one of them open, and Phoebe immediately wants to take this coffee maker home. Yeah, she, she, she finds oh, a box. I was looking it. for this coffee maker. Great. Yeah, she's like, "Oh, I, this is this is what I wanted." She picks it up. <laughs> And then um, Prue is like, you know, that's just a box, right? And then she's like, uh, see, that's why I need you to protect me from making a fool of myself. As if she didn't just do that. <laughs> well, like, you know, early Phoebe, like being kind of dumb was one of her things. But this I is a kind of another level. I over. could not figure out what the scene's intention was. Like this whole interaction was so confusing to me. I'm like, is she... Is she pretending to be stupid to make Prue feel better? Is she just trying to be funny? Is is she just dumb? It just comes off like she's dumb. Like, yeah, it makes it seem like she's dumb. And I'm like, I can't genuinely figure out what their yeah. intention is. <laughs> like, the fact that Prue has to tell her it's an empty box as she's holding. <laughs> it's so light. How would you not know? Even if... Even if it had it in there, it's in a dumpster. Yeah, There's it's a probably it's in a broken <laughs> if it had been in there. Nothing makes sense in this <laughs> this scene. Stupid. <laughs> and she does that like kind of baby voice and smile where it's like, oh, see, that's why you're here to protect me. <laughs> <laughs> Us beautiful people have to stick together. But anyway, um, so they continue their walk after this. I guess that was... They probably had some time to fill in the episode, so they just did that real quick. Mm -hmm. So they continue their walk down the street, and uh, they start talking about Phoebe and Cole. Uh, apparently, they're still dating at this point. Yeah. Because Prue's like, hey, how's Cole doing? Uh, Phoebe says Cole's been dodging demonic bounty hunters. So pretty normal stuff. Like, oh, you know, the huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's why it's good that Phoebe doesn't need Prue anymore, because <laughs> Cole's on the run from bounty hunters right now. <laughs> Yeah, she just pops in for booty calls. <laughs> yeah, she says Cole still has time to pop into the bedroom and then pop in and out of the bedroom, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to act extra horny to lay the seeds for the horny infection mm -hmm. later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Phoebe is like, well, I wonder if Cole really loves me or if he just likes me for my charms. So real good, solid relationship here. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is why she doesn't need Prue anymore. <laughs> she, does he really love me? Or yeah. I thought she meant charms like, you know, because she's a charmed one and maybe she could protect him or something. Um, but then Prue's like, no, no, uh, it, it can't just be sex. So I think charms mean sex in this context. I don't know. Um, Prue yeah. also says that Phoebe knows for a magical fact <laughs> that Cole loves her. She has to say for a magical for a fact. Magical fact. <laughs> 
So uh, Prue's like, yeah, he saved your life a lot of times, so it can't just be sex. And Phoebe is like, yeah, but what if it was really great sex? And she <laughs> says it in her baby voice, like, mm, great sex. <laughs> <laughs> So that's when they see an explosion in an alley. Thank God they can stop this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they rush in. They come across this uh, thug who's got kind of the Justin Bieber hair, mm -hmm. but pre-Justin Bieber. I guess this was kind of the rocker look of that time, right. the kind of emo look. Mm -hmm. He's got one of those star tattoos that were really prevalent <laughs> in that era. Uh, he's having a fight with a 90s businessman. Yeah. <laughs> Could not be more 90s businessman-ish. You look at that guy before they've told you anything yeah. about him. You're like, he is a 90s businessman. You, just, you know, there's some kid at home like, I wish my dad wouldn't work so much. <laughs> I wish he wasn't on his cell phone all the time. You're like, well, you're never going to see your dad again. <laughs> yeah. So you got your wish. <laughs> he stopped working. <laughs> so this uh, this 90s businessman is having a fight with the uh, the Bieber guy. Uh, he wants the box he has. It's this, like, translucent plastic box with some lights inside. It's, uh, like, you know, it's, it looks like a lot of the, you know, the tech things of that era where they made it in translucent plastic, like, oh, that's flashy or whatever, but this looks really cheapy for what it's supposed to be because it's yeah. like the box of sins yeah. but you just see these little glow lights in it. Like, yeah it's it's almost as pathetic as when uh, next generation just had like christmas lights as an alien <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah it um it reminded me uh of a caboodle not so much right. in like, it didn't look exactly like a caboodle but it looked like you know, something where you would keep like children's jewelry in like it looked mm -hmm. really cheap I feel like this could have used like a post effect on it to make the lights give off like more of a not a static glow, so it kind of moves around a bit, gives it kind of a otherworldly glow to it or something like that. Because right. it just it looks too cheapy. Maybe on SD it looked a little less bad. <laughs> no, we're watching the HD copies. Uh, they had some close ups though. It can't have looked that good. No. I don't get why this 90s businessman wants this box, right? It's the way that they show that this works is like someone's infected with a sin and then they self-destruct with the sin they're infected with. And this 90s businessman is infected with greed. But like, why is he after the, the box in particular just because he wants it? Because it seems to be like it's a drug and he's like, I need more greed, which doesn't seem like anyone else's. Yeah. I guess just because he's so greedy, he wants he's more so greed. He's so greedy, he wants more, yeah, maybe that's, I'm not sure. Yeah, we don't really get a lot about him or his sin, so hard to tell what's going on there. I don't I know. I guess he just wants it all, especially the box he of sins. He wants it all. He's so, like, I want all the sins, maybe, because <laughs> he's so sins. greedy. I need all the Dragon Balls. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, he's after this box, but the Bieber guy uh, doesn't want him to have it, so he blasts him away. So Prue throws the Bieber guy into some empty crates that are just sitting around mm -hmm. as you do. He drops the box and the guys scramble after it. So Prue flings it away across the street. Then Phoebe says, he <laughs> yeah! kicks yeah. The, the Bieber guy in the face. <laughs> <laughs> she literally goes, he yeah! yeah. <laughs> yeah. She x pox him. <laughs> 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 she's gonna smoke it she's gonna smoke some ass <laughs> with some she hansen's really wants, energy drink <laughs> she really wants to smoke some ass this episode she she wants to smoke all the ass <laughs> it's amazing because like just in a commercial break there's someone there with a phoebe smokes ass <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh phoebe i gotta write this down phoebe smokes ass hilarious your ass is grass and i'm gonna smoke it this Bieber guy is actually a middleman. He's working for the main guy that's pushing the sin or something or other. Mm -hmm. So he goes, that box belongs to Lucas before <laughs> farting away just so they know who to look for. <laughs> no reason for him to say that. No. <laughs> that box belongs to Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you a clue. Bye. <laughs> I'll drop the clue for you. That's when 90s businessman dashes across the street to get the box, and then he is completely annihilated by a bus. Yeah. <laughs> Opening credits. Like, watch this. I gotta be an idiot. <laughs> Final destinations. <of> me. <laughs> Dad, no! We don't have time for you. <laughs> his cell phone flies out of his hand, lands next to his child. 
you got your wish, monkey's paw <laughs> <No>! curls. <laughs> there was two different things happening to this guy. They yeah. didn't know about the other thing because they were too busy with the Stupid synth thing. Stupid kid with the monkey's paw. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when we come back from opening credits, Daryl's on the case. <laughs> At the crime scene, uh, Prue asks him if he found out anything, uh, but he says, uh, no, it was pretty normal. We see suicides like this all the time, unfortunately. He didn't interview them for, like, they well, have this they, crime scene knows. all blocked off. A lot of time has passed. But Prue doesn't even say, like, you know, oh, he ran in front of the bus, like, uh -huh. to go after that box. Like, but he knows that that happened. Like, she says it's later that it seems like he was demonically driven to do it. But at that point... They've told him what happened. They have both witnesses. It doesn't make any sense that they he's know he calling was it after a suicide. Something. Yeah, like it wouldn't. You could say it was a tragic accident, mm -hmm. but so this, calling it a suicide, he was clearly after something, yeah, not to get hit by the sloppy bus. Sloppy work by Daryl and I guess Prue and Phoebe. I guess sloppy work by everyone because Phoebe's being interviewed about this. Oh, this she is so... this guy's the worst because you think he has to be possessed by a sin already, though, yeah. with how idiotic oh, he that is. Guy, that guy is so dumb. I think Officer Dean. <laughs> Dean. I think it was Dan, wasn't it? No, it's Dean. Dean. Okay, Officer Dean. I don't remember them naming him. I don't know. According to the <laughs> yeah, according to that, his name's Dean. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, so Prue says that uh, the guy was demonically driven into the street because mm -hmm. she recognizes the signs by now. But that doesn't make any sense either because, like, what is demonically driven? Like, he uh, wanted that box, but there could be a million reasons why he wanted that. Yeah. She says that the demon that poofed away accused the businessman of being greedy and wonders if there's a connection. Why would she think that matters? <laughs> That's nothing. So um, Daryl is explaining 90s businessman's backstory. He's a stockbroker, but he's an unusual stockbroker because he was a philanthropist. He wasn't the usual greedy stockbroker. Oh. <laughs> so that's what was weird about it. And yet people are supposed to be infected with the thing they're predisposed to. So maybe he was greedy. So why was he a philanthropist, but a greedy yeah, philanthropist? Maybe, uh, charity fraud. Yeah. Oh, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. You know what? Fuck that guy. He, he deserved to be hit by a bus. <laughs> so uh, Prue shows Daryl the cheap plastic box in her bag. Like, oh, that's what he was after. Mm -hmm. No word to her about taking something from a crime scene. I guess he's like, it's cool. It's probably magic. You investigate. Thank you. Daryl asks what's in it, despite it being see-through. So you can see what's in it. Yeah. Looks like there's some little dinky lights in there. Yeah, a bunch of LED lights, I mm -hmm. guess. They're supposed to be colored, but we didn't have the budget for colored light bulbs. <laughs> yeah, they're supposed to be colored because everyone seems to have a specific color for their sin. And in the drawing in the Book of Shadows, all the balls have different colors, yeah. but these are just white. Mm -hmm. Slappy. So, yeah, this is where Phoebe's being interviewed by Officer Dean. <laughs> who, uh... <laughs> Uh, he asks if the bus driver could have avoided the man, if there's anything he could have done, and then follows that up with, hey, can I ask you to dinner? <laughs> this was so bad. After we're done cleaning up the splattered remains of this guy you saw hit by a bus. Yeah. Can I ask you why you're so ridiculously unprofessional? <laughs> <laughs> this guy is not infected with anything. No. Yet. This happens later, but Way he's just later. an unprofessional, horrible person. Like and this is the situation like you just watch someone get killed, run over by a bus. Yeah. Hey, time to flirt. Yeah. Even if <laughs> like it's already bad enough that he's a crime scene investigator yeah. and flirting with a a witness. <laughs> yeah, even if <laughs> but, it, it was But it's a murder scene. <laughs> yeah, even if it was okay to do this at work when you're in, you're an interviewing a witness. Mm -hmm. Um she still witnessed something horribly yeah. traumatic. She just witnessed a death. <laughs> this is worse than uh, than on Baywatch when would Mitch would ask for women's numbers when taking like <laughs> reports from them <laughs> about like you know drownings they saw or whatever. Yeah. He pulled that one twice. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> yeah, so this is Officer Mitch Buchanan here. <laughs> so she's like, uh, "You kind of caught me off guard with that one," and he says, "Oh, well, that's my job." 
No, it's not. No, you're <laughs> no, it's interviewing not your job. a witness. You're not interrogating someone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm supposed to jump out of the bushes and scare people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. As an officer, I'm supposed to put fear into the public. You're not trying to gutcha witnesses at a crime scene. What are you talking about? That's my, that's my job. job. <laughs> what? This guy should have been fired. He, yeah. sh- he should have been more than suspended, which mm-hmm. is what happens later. Not even for this offense. No. This one, he was let off the hook. Uh, he does get blandly scolded by Daryl. Yeah, he's like, because, hey, man. Hey, not cool. Not cool. <laughs> like, he's like, <laughs> hey, I gotta intervene here. Yeah? <laughs> it's not cool. You hey, don't do this on the stop job. Stop it. Hey, stop. <laughs> <laughs> and then he pokes him a little. Like, <laughs> So Phoebe uh, steps on over to Prue, who feels terrible for not saving the 90s businessman. She's like, man, we didn't save an innocent. Like, she's going to cry. Like, she actually cares that this person died. Mm. And then Phoebe's like, oh, well, what are you going to do? Uh. <laughs> she used to care about this stuff. She's not as, like, dismissive as later. She's kind of like, she's taking the approach of you can't save everyone. You know, mm-hmm. you can't take it so hard when, when you fail. You just got to try your best, you know. But she's kind of like... She's also can't save like, everyone. she's not taking things very seriously. <laughs> no, without, later she's like just having a casual chat yeah. with Piper about sushi, does not care. Well, and also her outfit, she just <laughs> got out. Yeah, <laughs> well, she was wearing that before the bus thing, but she uh-huh. did choose to wear that to a demon hunt, so mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of dumb. Yeah, she's got a vest on with a safety pin. Like. Yeah, oh, awful. <laughs> Two hours later. Meanwhile, we meet Lucas. The mysterious Lucas. He's uh that guy from Alias. What is the actor's yeah, name? You know, Kevin Wiseman. Yeah, he's Kevin Wiseman, the tech guy marshal on Alias. Well, uh, one of his prized roles was Lucas on Charmed. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> so he's pissed at uh, the Bieber guy, who's his flunky, for losing the box. But the guy's like, well, at least we got the businessman soul, which is like a tacky crystal. <laughs> <that he's holding. laughs> I'm like, is are they contained his soul in it? His soul is just a crystal. I yeah. don't know. I think from what they say later that it's kind of trapped in the crystal, but Leo's going to go break it open and yeah. scatter the crystal scatter ashes, his ashes over the sea like he his wanted soul or ashes. <laughs> deliver them to his son who's crying into his cell phone. It's kind of funny, you know, these earlier charms that you get, you know, actors you've seen in other shows and stuff where later, you know, it's the theater dads, like you just called them later. <laughs> like a lot I mean, of the time it's got... unrecognizable people and just these bit roles as demons. You would still get recognizable people, but they definitely have it had a lot more often, I think, more... in these earlier ones. Yeah, they definitely would get like uh, cheaper actors. I think uh, later on for some yeah, of the you like, get, like dumb margoyles. Demons. You get margoyles. <laughs> uh, excuse me, that was Shoe Shine Man in the Dark Knight, yeah, right? <laughs> extra voices in Kingdom Hearts. Or yeah, the, whatever. Everyone's gonna correct us on yeah. who the Kingdom Hearts was. He was one of the nobodies. Whatever. The right. Fuck. One of the third. One of the X's or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> the one that um that tortures Beast. <laughs> He's okay, the one that right. that takes control right, of Beast. Right. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so yeah, they have the soul, and Lucas is like, look, uh, let me tell you my story that you already know, obviously, so the audience knows. Uh, I need to deliver seven souls for seven sins. I'm damned to spend eternity uh, inflicting these on other people because I was I overindulged or something. I don't know. <laughs> he says, like, my own self-destruction was supposed to free me from sin, but then it put me here, which made me think he, like, he killed himself. Mm-hmm. To be free of sin, but it seemed like what they're describing later is like he got too overwhelmed by sin and then died. And then I don't know. Yeah. It's murky. What's going on with this guy? Yeah. It's weird. They, they have this backstory for him because it seems like later it would just be like, he's the sin demon. He does this. And they don't even bother saying like he used to be a person or this is why he does this or whatever. Right. Anyway, so uh, the Bieber guy is like. Uh, well, you gotta know the product to move it, yeah? <laughs> so they're like drug runners for sin or something? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's definitely the way the greed guy acted. Like, yeah, I need another hit of greed, man. Yeah. <laughs> but after that, it does, It seems like it's not that. No. So, I don't know. This whole time, they're in uh, just the weirdest set. Mm. Like, Lucas's hangout is this sort of, like, carnival graffiti type warehouse or something yeah yeah i don't really understand what's going on with that there's a bunch of masks on the wall like a horror poster like it's really colorful yeah i guess it's kind of interesting but yeah it could have like 
I don't know, made a bit more sense to the theming of what he does. I don't know. I mean, I guess it was fine. It's just a very, like, a specific set. Yeah, you know? it just it seems like there's... Wonder. Yeah. It was probably reused from something else. That's Maybe. probably why. <laughs> I, yeah, it just seems like it's interesting in a way that it could use a little explanation. But Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand the carnival theme, really, because there seems to be a lot of masks and stuff yeah. around. If he kind of was in that theme, you know, the peddler of sins, like at a carnival or something, that could work, but... It That's might be. not really the way they play the character. Yeah, it might be that they were just like, we need to redress a set and graffiti would be cheap to do and we have some masks and stuff and yeah. here's some random debris we can pile around. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? So uh, Lucas figures out that he can get to the witches by inflicting them with sin. This is how he's going to get his box back. Uh, but he needs the box to do it, so I guess he just wants to fuck with them. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, once he formulates his plan, he blows up the Bieber guy. He's done. Yeah, he goes, what do I need <laughs> you for? I feel like that's like very similar lines get said a lot in Churn, where the main demon decides oh, to yeah. kill his underling for no reason. Like, what do I need you for now? Like, <laughs> Maybe you want a little backup for this whole thing? Yeah. There was... <laughs> that's what you need him for? <laughs> Charmed had a formula, and there were many lackeys that where this would happen. They just get blown up for no yeah. reason once they were done with, you know, getting the, the like, opening part of the story done. What did he ever need him for if he didn't want him at this point? Like, why I don't did he know. ever get this guy? I don't know why he needed him to push the sins when the other guy could just go and throw lights at people and then leave. Like, yeah. what was the other guy doing besides like, losing his box? If you didn't need him now, you didn't need him ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, what did he do? He handed the box off to the other guy to, to do his job yeah. for him? What it's, else is he doing? It's like he was being sloth that day. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. He was the sinniest of them already at all the sins. <laughs> yeah. Very silly, though. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the sinniest <laughs> of them all? <laughs> I don't know why they didn't just have the charmed ones kill this guy. Like, it just makes these guys look stupid for killing off their underlings for no reason. Yeah, well, it could have... Made it seem like, you know, well, they didn't save the innocent, but they at least made sure that other demon wasn't going to hurt any more yeah. people or something, you know, mm -hmm. but they don't. And like Peru could have been a bit prideful about like, yeah, I did it. I got rid of that guy at least or something. Yeah, set up the, like they're like, like Phoebe's like, well, we could have asked him for more information, but Prue blew him up, you know, and then that plants yeah. the seeds for that pride thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like they didn't. Um structure that well enough to set up the pride mm -hmm. because she starts acting prideful but for a long time it just seems like normal prue stuff yeah and i don't know if they set up any anything like in the beginning to pay it off mm -hmm. and she's the only one of the sisters that should have any pride about her work <laughs> <laughs> she's the only one who can be proud of herself <laughs> it's a deserved pride okay yeah Groovy. so prue and phoebe come home phoebe removes her jacket to reveal one of the ugliest shirts she's ever worn and I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I say this a lot, but it is truly one of the most hideous shirts I have ever seen. <laughs> it's not it's a shirt. Yeah, it's like defining this as a shirt is like when you say Taco Bell has meat in it. It's a technicality. <laughs> <laughs> like how much of the percentage of this is a shirt? Mm -hmm. Debatable. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like... It's a sweater, but like like a sweater vest, but split down the middle, uh, and then held together with a giant safety pin. So it's not like yeah, it's, closed. It's not any anything way. that's meant to close, which is why yeah. she had to put a safety pin in. It. Yeah, there's like a giant safety pin, like think like a comical baby diaper safety <laughs> pin. You know? And then like it's like it's open in the middle, so it's not closed. No. And then she has a bra on. Mm -hmm. Just full out in the open. Like, I feel like you need to have a, a mesh shirt or a see-through shirt over a bra if you're going to go out with your bra out in the open. <laughs> but like this, it's basically public indecency. <laughs> Naked woman! I love, like, too, you can tell she has to be kind of careful with it. Because there's one point where Melissa, Alyssa Milano kind of runs into the room and she, you can tell she's like, I don't really want this to pop open here. <laughs> you think they had to get the, the breast tape out even with the bra? <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if this was a trend around the time, because I swear there was a, a Baywatch, back to the Baywatch references, but um, I swear there was a Baywatch where um, Pamela Anderson is wearing 
a shirt. It's not a sweater, but it's a shirt held together with safety pins like that. Okay. It showed less than that, but maybe <laughs> that was a really, really bad trend of the late 90s. <laughs> It's so bizarre. It's not a shirt. <laughs> it's it's awful. This one was uglier than the Pamela Anderson shirt. They were both bad, but... <laughs> this would have made sense if Phoebe is going to be sloth and she's like, I'm too lazy to even bother putting a shirt on. <laughs> I, <laughs> Throw this vest on over my bra. <laughs> it's not even, like, sexy revealing. I get why you want to wear, like, sexy revealing clothes. Like, let me show mm-hmm. some side boob or some cleavage or whatever. It's like... A, a granny sweater type thing <laughs> safety pin so yeah. it's like what is it's so ugly <laughs> it's like she might as well like duct tape her shirt together and so uh, i don't I mean, want to get dressed <laughs> duct tape myself she did wear the ass of a pair of jeans as a shirt once so i'm surprised she wouldn't wear just duct tape as an outfit at one point <laughs> awful you see her rolling around on the floor in a pile of duct tape. Well, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I was. I Maybe thought you were no. going to like, just roll around in dirt. And, no, like, yeah, yeah she dirt covered me. She <laughs> just do dirt. <laughs> Might as well just throw some glue on herself and then rolls around in dirt. <laughs> <laughs> she glues hay to herself. Man, as long she... as Angel doesn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> This is there's there they do comment on the shirt later, so they are trying to uh, plant the seeds of lust, horniness, whatever with mm-hmm. Phoebe. But this is the horny shirt they came up with. <laughs> Maybe they were like, it has to be something so ridiculous that it doesn't seem like slut shamey. If mm-hmm. when Prue is like, hey, put an actual shirt on, it has to be something so ridiculous. Like, why would you ever wear this in public? <laughs> I do love, you know, that, that we have Prue around to say stuff like that, missing from the show later. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, Prue was around to call Phoebe out on her shit. And mm-hmm. that's why the show was tempered enough that even when they did stupid shit, it was entertaining versus irritating. Mm-hmm. Because she was, like, the honest one. She was like, hey, quit being a yeah. dipshit. You didn't have to tell it like it is, Prue. <laughs> Instead of just a bunch of yes men around the <laughs> bitchy hags or whatever. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so Phoebe, in her terrible shirt, (laughs) question mark, uh, goes to get Piper, who's uh, in the kitchen, wearing this kind of Asian-inspired shirt, making sushi. It is a weird outfit for her, but I guess it's supposed to be she's trying to dress up for Leo, Mm -hmm. like wear this kind of like uh, Japanese-type shirt uh, for sushi that she's making for him. Well, she's also planning to make him dress up. Yeah, yeah. She's saying that she's making sushi uh, for Leo to break up his day. And then Phoebe snidely says, And take up all of yours. <laughs> As if the thought of doing something nice for your husband and yeah. taking some of your precious time away is, is the worst thing in the world. But she can, like, waste all her time on dates as long as it's not doing that much for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? Crappy dates on a million with a million guys. Guys she doesn't could. even like very yeah. much. I love she's doing this right after seeing a guy get hit by a bus. Mm -hmm. She hasn't said anything to Piper about this yet. She's got to have a a little goof-off conversation with her. Yeah, you know, it's that theme of charm. Death is cheap. They don't care. (laughs) Except Prue. (laughs) Yeah, Prue's the only one who's really concerned about this. That's why it comes off like Phoebe's being dismissive. Like, you Mm kind of see in that first scene where she's coming from, but afterwards, it's like, no, she really didn't care. Yeah, you could have a little bit in there. You don't have to have her weeping, but, you know. Yeah. You know, life goes on, but you got to be like, this kind of tough. Seeing yeah. a guy get smattered across the windshield of a bus. Mm-hmm. Shove it right up your hairy <laughs> Yeah, Piper is like, well, I like taking care of Leo and dressing up. And uh, I'm going to dress Leo up a little bit and uh, de-flannel him. <laughs> <laughs> I love for years they make the flannel jokes, but, you know, he, li- mm. he knows what he likes. So they don't ever change that yeah. he loves flannel. <laughs> to de-flanderize him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, flannelizing is when you turn into a little bitch boy that gets <laughs> thrown around all the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get that TV tropes, flannelizing. <laughs> it's the old uh, Clark Kent. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Piper is overcompensating. That's why she would dare to do nice things for her husband. <laughs> That's why she's being so nice to him. Otherwise, <laughs> 
Uh, she's overcompensating because she doesn't want the elders to have any reason to take Leo away again. She's like, look, I'm treating him nice. Eh? <laughs> Don't do anything. Let me keep my puppy. I'll take care of him. Yeah. And then Phoebe goes, they wouldn't do that because you're married now. You <laughs> cut to all the other times they got rid of Leo because they were being bitches. Yeah. Q being a trucker. <laughs> whatever the fuck. I do love it. And Phoebe's like, oh yeah, but they might take him away because we just screwed up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They're not going to find any fault in you. Uh, but maybe us. We did just get a guy obliterated by a bus. Like, Thought I'd mention that. Well, one of you really tried not to and the other was there in a safety pin vest. <laughs> I couldn't run in this, so. <laughs> Piper's like, well, I don't want to be complacent in my marriage. That's going to go away real quick. <laughs> this is very weird, right? Post-marriage Piper. <laughs> yeah. Piper before she's completely gone to shit. Yeah. She's in the stage where um, you care a little bit about if you go to the bathroom, you want to like... uh you know air it out and make sure that your partner doesn't smell the stink and then mm -hmm. after and then she's like real quick gonna go to like and hey, leo check out this dump <laughs> <laughs> you have to smell it inhale it this proves you love me now you clean it up <laughs> huff my poop leo <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh so phoebe's like yeah we just lost an innocent let's go figure this out <laughs> you could take a dump later <laughs> um so Prue is in there attempting to open the box. Phoebe just told her, hey, wait a minute. And they come back in. She's like, what are you doing? Yeah, this is. <laughs> I'm going to open this box. Yeah. And Prue is being stupid. This so she is gets a the weird, voice. dumb Prue <laughs> moment. Because she's, I guess this is the pride there's, it's supposed to be, but it doesn't seem prideful. It's not prideful. and She's not actually infected with pride yet. So it's just a weird, stupid well, moment. Well, I mean, I think they're trying to demonstrate she is predisposed to a little bit uh -huh, of pride but before. But this <laughs> goes beyond prideful. Yeah, it's stupid because Phoebe's like, hey, the guy that wanted this got hit by a bus you could get hit by a bus too so let's wait a second mm -hmm. and so uh yeah they go back in there and it's like what are you doing she's like i'm gonna open it up uh don't worry whatever it is we can handle it so let's not have any caution yeah. it's just being stupid versus prideful but i guess that's the point she's not thinking about yeah, the consequences it should have been phoebe that wants to do this because she's yeah. the dumb one <laughs> <laughs> the, the irony of pride being Prue in this episode mm. when we know Piper and Phoebe later yeah. <laughs> are the most prideful people in the world. <laughs> so Piper is like, well, maybe we should call Leo and ask his opinion on this. And Prue complains that they didn't need his opinion before they were married. <laughs> if I want his opinion, I'll beat it out of her. <laughs> <laughs> So Leo orbs in with a flannel shirt. <laughs> That's a good pay up, pay off and or a setup and payoff. That's the term. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying payoff before the setup, which is the wrong order. <laughs> Phoebe's like, hey, uh, should we open this box? <laughs> and Leo's like, oh, well, did you check the book of shadows first? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which they didn't because they've all been overcome with a dumb infection <laughs> right now. <laughs> Like they got all acting. infected by the Phoebe. Yeah, Phoebe got her dumbness and then spread it to all What of she's them. doing with that vest shirt, she had it open to spread her dumb ball. <laughs> but really, though, all of them have had extremely dumb moments yeah. in this episode so yeah, far. All pre-infection is weird. Yeah. So, um... Piper lovingly compliments Leo to suck up to the elders and get back at Prue for that comment. See, see, I love him. <laughs> yeah. See this? <laughs> it's not because she loves him. It's for two alt alternative motives here. Yeah, ulterior. <laughs> ulterior motives. Oh, fuck. <laughs> alternative motives. Alternative. <laughs> she was an alternative motive. <laughs> I cannot say the right words at all. Anyway, <laughs> her alternative mode, <laughs> her alternator mode. <laughs> anyway, um, so Phoebe's got the school thing to get to, but this is early Phoebe. So she's like, well, I can't make it to that now. I got to help with this stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Later, she'd be like, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the others are like, no, no, you're going to you're so close to graduating. You don't want to mess this up. Go. We'll take care of this. Uh, but first, Prue is like, hey, you should change it to an actual shirt. <laughs> she literally says an actual yeah. shirt. Because <laughs> it's not a shirt. It's so. not a shirt. I, I don't know. That has to be uncomfortable, too. It looks itchy. And then the safety pin would be like poking India with your jacket on. It just doesn't yeah. function in any way a shirt should. <laughs> no. 
So uh, the Book of Shadows does, in fact, have this box in it. <laughs> uh, but the drawing has a bunch of colorful balls, which, uh, as we established, Well, that's not bother. the same one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, these are the seven deadly sins bottled at the source by the source, is what it says in the book. What Piper repeats, I don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. I guess the source of sin by the source? Is that the book's cute way of saying the source uh, of all evil bottled uh, the sins? Yeah, maybe. I guess. Uh, so, Leo explains the sins to them <laughs> as they pan over a page in the book that describes the sins. Uh, the description for anger says that it's uncontrollable fury. <laughs> <laughs> uncontrollable. <laughs> uncontrollable. <laughs> they alive, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> uncontrollable fury. <laughs> Uh, I love he has to describe what the, the seven deadly sins are to them as if they mm, wouldn't know. This yeah. is like pretty common knowledge, <laughs> I would guys, think. Have you watched seven? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's in the box, Phoebe? <laughs> uh, what's in the box? Uh, what's in the fucking box? So whichever sin someone is predisposed to, uh, that's what they're going to be attacked with. So this philanthropist guy was predisposed to greed, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people infected with things in this episode. I'm like, why are they predisposed to this? Yeah. Like, there's a pastor who's infected with envy. It's like, why is he predisposed to envy? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess not all pastors are good. Let's, no. let's be real. <laughs> so we don't know his story. Maybe so, he was yeah, an asshole. Uh, yeah, quite. It happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> so anyway, um... If they destroy Lucas, the sins will lose their power. Uh, Leo is clear about there's no magical solution to this because sins are part of everyone. So, um, meanwhile, they just left that box on the coffee table downstairs <laughs> and Lucas poofs in and grabs it. Great job. <laughs> All he does is poof in and grab it. Yeah. There, there was no struggle here for him. <laughs> what would happen if they had it in like, like he didn't, he couldn't just grab it easily. Like his plan was to like infect them with yeah. the sins. Why did they leave the box down there when they went yeah. up to check it out? They Wouldn't they want to look them, at yeah, it? Yeah, to like cross check, you know, what other magical boxes it could be. Mm -hmm. That didn't make any sense that they left it downstairs on the coffee table. Sloppy work. <laughs> so Phoebe, who has changed into a real shirt <laughs> and a furry red vest, <laughs> uh, heads downstairs. She's like, I could just safety pin this vest. <laughs> mm, chop, chop, chop. <laughs> so uh, Lucas sees her and immediately hits her with the horny sin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Horny <laughs> seeks her out immediately, and yeah. immediately you cannot tell a damn difference with Phoebe at all through no, the whole episode. No, this is just her later. <laughs> dates, watch it, watch it, dates. Yep. So the others follow, they go downstairs, they're infected with their respective sins, and then uh, Lucas poofs away, and Piper goes, Oh no, tell me we weren't, <laughs> don't tell me we were infected with those sin thingies. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. So this is like her saying, oh no. And she notices she's dead. Yeah, that later episode was like, oh no, I'm dead again. Oh no. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, Lucas is poofed away. Uh, everyone's like, well, what were we infected with? I don't know. I don't feel any different. And Prue's like, I don't know, maybe we're immu immune because we're magic. We're, we're immune. immune. <laughs> immune. We're immune. <laughs> Because we're magic, <laughs> is what she says. <laughs> uh, and they're like, well, yeah, let's just get back to our business then. I guess it's fine. Yeah, so Phoebe goes out into the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, a coffee maker. Put it back. Look, a syringe with just a little bit of stuff left in it. Lightly I'm used this, syringe. <laughs> I'm not going to let this go to waste. Lightly used IV drip. Thank you, Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Rocket. <laughs> So uh, Leo has beamed up to go check with the elders. Uh, Piper and Prue are going to look at the Book of Shadows. They are going to do a little bit. Uh, and Phoebe's going to go to school. <laughs> so the next scene is Phoebe meeting with her professor. And Phoebe horny! <laughs> <laughs> Boom! <laughs> she hits on her professor, uh, ironically, for her ethics class. Yeah. She tells him she's not wearing any underwear and then tackles him off of the desk. This is more than just, like, Mm, lust. Like, this, this is, is uh, violent. Yeah, this is sexual assault at that point. Well, I mean, she, lust, I guess, would go under that. I just mean, like, tackling. Like, Yeah, but she's sexy? sexually assaulting the professor. She is sexually assaulting him. That is true. But it yeah. is lust. <laughs> but, but it is lust. <laughs> but yeah, she does sexually assault him. Does not follow through 
with the sex because no. she does establish later that she stops herself. But otherwise, uh, I guess she would she would have R worded him. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I don't know about that. Anyway, uh, so at home, Piper is ordering a bunch of things out of a catalog because apparently she's gluttony. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this is a, a great Piper episode because she's quite funny in it. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. And like, I feel like her selfishness is part of the sin, so it feels less bad. Yeah, it's and not as annoying as it is later. It, it's amusing <laughs> the way she's doing things. Yeah, in this well, episode. and also they do have a line like it, it, where it's like, what is too selfish and what is her just sense of humor, right? Because mm -hmm. like in the early episodes, she would say things, but she still cared a little yeah. bit. And even, like, when she's talking about deflanalizing uh, Leo and stuff, like, it's not, it doesn't come off, like, super bitchy, like, some of the things later do. It just seems like, you know, she, he can make a few uh, compromises for me and stuff, you know. Yeah. She cares a little bit, uh, except for the gluttony thing, now she's focused on that. Mm -hmm. um, but their version of gluttony is just, like, ex excess. It's not just eating, although she does do a lot of eating in this episode. I think because, you know, they didn't want to make Holly Marie Combs, like, eat all the time in every scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, they gave a bit of that to Leo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do like when she grabs a whole pie, though. Very good. <laughs> yeah. There's, like... I, I was going to say nothing funnier. There's a lot of things funnier, but one of the funniest <laughs> things is grabbing a whole pie to eat it. Uh, very uh, Wesley on TNG, just <laughs> eating a whole pie. Very good. So uh, Prue hangs up the phone before she can spend like $5,000. And uh, Piper complains because Leo needs shoots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it takes a turn. I was like, Leo needs a shoot. <laughs> It would be very funny if she put him in some sort of like Miami Vice type suit, but he's laying around being lazy in the suit. Yeah. Like sleeping on the bed yeah. in, like, in a suit. <laughs> yeah. Just imagine him in like a white 80s suit yeah. doing the lazy thing yeah. on the couch. He would basically be um, Mitch in the Baywatch Nights pilot that wasn't the pilot, where he goes partying and then sleeps on the couch yeah. after a bender or whatever. <laughs> Let's see, like later seasons. Uh, Piper, the way she's acting after the infection, is how she would have been at the start of the episode. Like, I don't need oh, yeah. <laughs> the way that they act in this episode is how they act later normally. Mm -hmm. Like, they're supposed to be cartoonishly selfish, yeah. and that, that was their standard mm -hmm. operation at that point. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, she drinks some champagne and eats chocolates <laughs> <laughs> while Prue uh, is uh, trying to get this stuff done. She's like, well, we're supposed to be Tracking down Lucas. You're supposed to help me with this. So she's like, eh, well, fill me in. Catch me up. <laughs> <laughs> so Prue's found out that once someone is infected, it only takes a few hours before they self-destruct. Uh, presumably they do something that gets themselves killed and not just they blow up or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Phoebe rushes in saying that she's been kicked out of her class for horny. <laughs> <laughs> After she did nothing wrong. She did nothing wrong. Uh, in the middle of this, Piper goes to grab the entire pie to just eat by hand. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious. Like, I don't have time for this dumb Phoebe story. <laughs> I need pie for this. <laughs> Where's this blueberry? What did I it mean, make? That's what you might as well do. It's like, oh, good. Another dumb Phoebe story. <laughs> Let me get a pie. <laughs> yeah, I can take a bathroom break for this. <laughs> well, come smell this. <laughs> Leo, come look at this. <laughs> it's a charmed dump. You should feel privileged to smell it. <laughs> The power of three poop. <laughs> <laughs> it's the power of three dumb. <laughs> and Phoebe's like, I can't believe someone threw these poops. <laughs> I'm going to take them. <laughs> Would it be better power dump of three? Is power that dump of three. <laughs> the sure. power dump of three. <laughs> power dump of three. I should call this episode that. You can get demonetized if I call it power dump of three. <laughs> Dump might be okay. Power dump, though. Power. What else is a power dump? <laughs> uh, maybe some vehicle at the dump. <laughs> power dumper. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Prue has figured out that they were, in fact, infected. This seems like infected behavior. <laughs> uh, which Piper questions with a mouthful of pie. Like, huh? Infected? <laughs> <laughs> like she's like the rest of you must have been infected, not me. <laughs> she says that later, but I think yeah. She at this point she thinks like, oh, I fought it off. Mm -hmm. I am the strongest, <laughs> so, which is true. <laughs> true, Prue. <laughs> true, Prue. 
I think I wrote that somewhere too. I was like, it's true. True, true. Uh, so yeah, Piper tries to call for Leo, uh, but it turns out he's already there. He's in the living room watching TV with his hand down his pants. <laughs> yeah. Here's the star of the episode. <laughs> it's like sort of in his shirt, but it's edging down towards in his pants. He's definitely going to put his hand in his pants. Now, I think it's kind of in there. It's like in the shirt it's going like the, down the to the pants. The tips of the fingers. So yeah. it's not lewd, but, uh, but alluding yeah. <laughs> to the hand down the pants. <laughs> Very good. This He's is... not like masturbating to John Wayne. Okay? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the star of the episode, Lazy Leo. Yes. I fucking love it. <laughs> Very good. This is the best Leo's ever been. <laughs> it's, oh man. The well, best a Leo can get. <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't this be Leo all the time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, this is another thing that I was like, when has Leo ever really been lazy? Why is he predisposed yeah, to laziness? Why is he predisposed to laziness? What is that about? He says even I've been, you know, doing this light lighter stuff for like 60 years. I think I can get a break here. I don't really understand what he's the one that's doing the most all the time. Cause Piper always bitches at him for like doing his job while she's, you know, doing something else. So mm-hmm watching her shows or whatever yeah. she's the lazy leo <laughs> she's got a taste of her own medicine yeah do something do it um they're like well what, what did you find out from the elders and he's like oh, nothing i orbed halfway up and i got tired <laughs> <laughs> i love that so much imagining him mid orb like eh, i uh, want to finish <laughs> uh, flopping back down <laughs> <laughs> finish her. Orbed halfway up and got tired. <laughs> Lazy Leo is everything. Yes. So uh, in case you didn't get it, he's sloth. <laughs> uh, so Phoebe uh, slinks in and asks him to turn on MTV because she's horny for Carson Daly. <laughs> but they're not going to put MTV on because they're not going to pay for that. But <laughs> no. That's when she tries making the moves on Leo, right? No, that happens oh, later. Okay. Right now she's just kind of being horny for mm. Carson Daly, and then later it spreads to everyone, mm-hmm. I guess. Anyway, so Piper comes in and she gives Lazy Leo some chips. <laughs> and he's like, Thanks, babe. I'm gonna be thirsty soon. <laughs> <laughs> this should be all the time. Piper being his servant hand and foot <laughs> while he's lazy. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the ultimate comeuppance for her. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd love if this happened later, you know, where she's screeching for Leo, and then he's like, in here, bring soda. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Leo eats the chips lazily. <laughs> um, Piper has a bunch of flowers delivered at this time. Phoebe hits on the delivery guy. Piper has had these flowers sent for herself. Why is she not pride? <laughs> I needed some flowers for myself. <laughs> Again, it'd be hard to separate this from later, Piper. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> uh, Leo burps into his chips. <laughs> uh, Prue says that because the sins are drawn to their predispositions... Uh, Piper got gluttony because she overdoes things. Uh, but but she's like, well, I must have been strong enough to fight off the infection because I'm fine. So I didn't get a sin. Uh, does not go into uh, the obvious with Phoebe. She got horny because she's horny all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and then they don't talk about Leo because it makes no sense. No. She sees something interesting on the news. And then she yells at Leo to turn it up, lazy. <laughs> <laughs> He sleepily complies. <laughs> <laughs> turn uh, it up, lazy. <laughs> turn it up, lazy. There's a hostage situation going on. Um, there's a pastor that's been infected with envy, and he wants a jag. A jag wire. <laughs> Uh, they had three more sins to do, so they just gave them out to some randos. They're like, oh, we only have four people infected, so yeah. what are the other sins? I don't know why Daryl didn't get one. Yeah, what would Daryl... Daryl would be sloth. Yeah. He's so sleepy in his delivery. <laughs> I feel like that's what he's predisposed to. Yeah, unless you, like, imagine there's a lot of underlying anger there. He could have been anger instead of <laughs> the rando. <In> the cap! <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> he whisper yells at people. <laughs> but, yeah, he's got to be like holding back a lot of anger dealing with the Jaren ones. <laughs> Finally, he gets to get them back for all those times they were <laughs> shitty to him. <laughs> So, Prue drags Phoebe along to save the innocents, uh, while Piper's like, I'm gonna haul down the fort with Leo. <laughs> and Phoebe says, more like haul down the couch. <laughs> <laughs> Prue's like, fine, I have to do everything anyway, so I'm gonna go do this. It's Prue. It's yep. damn Prue. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Prue that. <laughs> Can I call this episode Prue that? <laughs> Prue that. No, you'll get demonetized. <laughs> no. Power dump of three. So, um, <laughs> Piper goes, you think she's mad? And then Lazy Leah goes like, eh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite line delivery is like, probably. Probably. <laughs> Stuff is pace with chips. <laughs> so, uh, he is flipping channels on TV and, uh, Piper sees an ugly stained glass flamingo that she has to buy. <laughs> Leo is overwhelmed by the act of turning the channel back. (laughs) 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 Caveman Leo. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, At the hostage situation, uh, Prue tells Daryl to just uh, order the SWAT team to let him in. (laughs) As if Daryl's in charge of that. Like, he's like, "Uh, no, I can't just tell them to let you in. Why is Daryl, like, leading the SWAT team? (laughs) I don't think he is. He's I think not. she just thinks he can do that. And he's like, I'm in the shit with them and I can't just tell them to do stuff. The reason Daryl's there at all. I don't know. It's uh, the cops in Charmed are the, the every cu- type of case <laughs> cops that not right. just homicide, but kidnappings or uh, yeah. Cause he's random a homicide petty theft detective, or, right? Is, that's supposed to be is, his but job. But every crime he's investigating right. it could be a, a petty crime. But he's still mm-hmm. investigating it, because mm-hmm. that's the one cop with lines they have. Yeah. And also the shitty Officer well, Dean in this yeah. episode. Because <laughs> uh, Phoebe... this was worth it, because Phoebe Horny. <laughs> yeah. Phoebe Horny. She goes to flirt with that guy, because he's there. Yeah, she goes, uh, Dean, I'm listening. <laughs> so, um, Daryl is like, hey, Prue, let the negotiators handle this. And she's like, "Uh, no, I got a plan. So she just waltzes in. Mm -hmm. He has to, like, spin in a circle with his badge to try and get them to not shoot her. (laughs) He's almost doing, like, a ballet spin with his badge. He has a pirouette. (laughs) Hold your fire! (laughs) (laughs) He turns into the Tasmanian devil. (laughs) Hold your fire! (laughs) (laughs) Uh, he goes in, or um, he doesn't go in. Prue goes in, uh, and the pastor tries to shoot her. <laughs> we have like a kind of like tense scene where it's like, did he shoot yeah. her or not? You hear the bang, and you're like, what happened? Their powers are acting wonky because they're infected with these sins. Yeah, so she can't uh, disarm him immediately. So he fires, uh, but then she comes out with him. She kicked his ass off screen. Yeah. <laughs> And then she mugs for the news cameras, like, yeah, I'm the one that saved the day. <laughs> She's still the most useful one, infected with the stupid sin. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing. Um, it's fine to do an interview after you saved someone. She is mm. acting a little smug well, about it. But... Daryl cuts her off before she's about to say, like, I'm a charmed one and stuff like Does that. Does she say, almost she, say that? It seems like she's about to go into that. Okay. Because she's like, you know, she says it's her duty to save innocence. They're like, oh, why? And oh, I see. That's when he cuts her off. Yeah. Daryl saving her ass. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, then he says that the, uh, the press will destroy her is the reason he gives for going away. As if, like, well, first of all, like she's a hero, so I don't think the press generally are like, ah, let's. They're not no. J. Jonah Jameson, you know. Take yeah. down all the heroes. Yeah, it's just a weird <laughs> way to say it. it's like you were about to give away your secret. You don't want to do that. Yeah, that's all he could have said. It's just like you were about to blab your secret. Yeah, get it together. And then Prue's like, nothing can destroy me. <laughs> and she realizes that she's bleeding from a bullet wound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it grazed her, so it wasn't a serious wound, right. but. I'm bleeding, making me the victor. Anyway, um, Prue talks down to Daryl. She kind of realizes she's been infected with something, but she's just like, anyway, do this. Mm. Find the pastor. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, she turns into later Piper and Phoebe, because that's how yes. they would talk to Daryl all the time. Just like, 
you know, like he's an idiot. Yeah, but their motivations were usually more selfish than Prue's being. Like it is very yeah. reminiscent of them, but Prue is still being better than them in yeah. this instance. Uh, meanwhile, Phoebe is in the back of a SWAT van with the with the shitty officer that flirted with her. Yeah, uh, she brought about a hundred condoms with her. She's <laughs> like, I'm prepared. Uh huh. Um, he is not infected. At no, this point, no, he, he just decided this was okay to get in the back of the SWAT van to have sex with her. Why was this guy there too? Like, stupid. <laughs> well, I get why you would want officers to at least keep the crowd back. Yeah, I guess that could have been what. So, so in that case, he was you know right. there for a reason to yeah, hold the crowd the back, and he's like, "No, this is okay. I will abandon my post to go screw horny lady." Yeah, yeah. He gets. Uh, they get dragged out of there, and then Daryl. Tears him a new one, mm. basically saying like, you know, not only it was this the middle of the day, and I think he means the work day, yeah. not just like sex in the middle of the day is unacceptable. He's like sex in the middle of the day and during a crisis situation, mm -hmm. you're suspended, which I feel was very nice of him. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because like he should have been fired. Yeah, <laughs> he was acting totally unprofessional. Like even I yeah. could see maybe well, it's being like I told you for the earlier, earlier in this day to stop flirting with her. Yeah. Now you're in the back of a van screwing her. Yeah, this is the least bad thing that could happen to him. This guy should have been fired. Mm -hmm. Prue tells Phoebe she figured out her sinus pride. And Phoebe says she doesn't seem that different. And then Prue says, neither do you. <laughs> This is Prue. <laughs> yes, this Prue is dead. damn Prue. <laughs> Honestly, Phoebe is the hardest one to tell she's been infected. Yeah, this just seems normal. She would do that with her empathy powers later. Like, I have to make out. <laughs> yeah, I have empathy powers, which means I have to make it about me. When uh, when Daryl's chewing out Officer <laughs> Dean. Yeah, I just want to say, Phoebe is like that scene in Care Bears. Where she's like, we don't have time to care about you. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What about me? We don't have time to care about you. Anyway, uh, so as Daryl is chewing out this uh, shitty officer, uh, the guy's like, well, I didn't have much of a choice. You uh, did. Uh, uh, yeah. She wasn't forcing you into this, buddy. No, and he's like, I can't right now. I'm in the middle of a job. <laughs> yeah. So he gets suspended, and then Lucas shows up to infect him with uncontrollable fury. Oh! <laughs> the girls arrive home to find it full of things that Piper bought, including a Nintendo 64! <laughs> I, I wonder why that was in the background, because you'd have to clear showing that, right? Because the label's mm. visible and stuff. Yeah, I mean, they didn't highlight it. I don't think you'd have to clear it. They didn't highlight it? They used it as a weapon at one point. Yeah, they did. They definitely <laughs> threw through the 65. <laughs> yeah. The... But, I mean, it wasn't like they had a big close-up on it or anything. Like, you notice it, you notice it. Yeah, maybe they thought it wouldn't be as noticeable, like, in, in SD. SD. Yeah. yeah. But we noticed. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> So, uh, Piper has used magic to get her things faster. Mm -hmm. They do mention personal gain, like, this is a personal gain thing, but no personal gain consequences happen. No. Bad things happen to Piper later because she's self-destructing because <laughs> of the sin thing, mm -hmm. but the actual, like, they don't get into the person. This is a lot of personal gain, just yeah. buying all of this stuff. Remember and, when Paige helped someone else and it was personal gain? <laughs> What the hell? Piper's allowed to speed up her Piper shipping. Piper should have had the gigantic boobs but, as a consequence. I mean, again, most likable Piper's ever been that she got a 64. <laughs> How old was 64 at that point? Was it new? No, was... it wasn't new. I think this was 2001. Oh, okay. So someone on set just had a 64. So that'd be funny. <laughs> Maybe. She order it on eBay or what? <laughs> Maybe. Well, probably wouldn't. You could probably still get one in 2001, maybe. He's looking it up. Yeah, I'm trying to look at the <laughs> years. It was uh, so, like 97 is when it first came out. Nice. Lifespan till 2002. Nice. So it was still like yeah. available, so but it could was still old get at that one. point. Yeah. Like, it wasn't the most recent no. console, but it was still being produced. Yeah, it wasn't dead quite yet. So this is when Phoebe strolls into the living room where the star of the episode, Lazy Leo, is watching the big screen TV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
this is where Phoebe starts to flirt with him. She's like slinking on the couch and like undoing her top, like, mm-hmm. hey. yeah. and he just shushes her. Like he's like, I'm watching TV. <laughs> <laughs> She's just annoying him. Yeah. <laughs> but then she takes away the remote and that really upsets him. <laughs> she, she turns off the TV because she's horny. And then Piper comes in and she tells her to get her slutty hands <laughs> off her husband. <laughs> she is about to brain Phoebe with a statue. <laughs> she's going to murder her. <laughs> All right, like, this doesn't really have anything to do with Piper's infections. <laughs> it's just her call saying that to people. Yeah, I guess she, yeah, she was just going to murder her for flirting with her <laughs> husband. That's not part of gl- gluttony. No. Anyway, uh, Prue saves Phoebe's ass, so. Uh, good for Prue, once again, the only one doing anything. How I, is, like, you know, you know, they say, like, they cure themselves with these unselfish acts. How is... Peru not going out and saving people unselfish acts because they're because it's the wrong motivation glory yeah she's doing it to to make herself look good rather Mm -hmm. than because she wants to save them so i guess that's the trick with i don't believe phoebe's motivation is selfless ever for anything (laughs) (laughs) i don't know Peru orders leo to talk to the or to the elders and he's like no i'm too tired (laughs) <laughs> and then she yells at him and starts shoving him like do it <laughs> and he's like you guys never listen to me anyway I'm gonna orb upstairs and take a nap <laughs> <laughs> yay <laughs> presumably he farts as he leaves Yeah. <laughs> so later that night uh, Prue is looking for answers in the book of shadows they're still trying to find who the last uh, person is infected with the sin I guess that's what they're trying to figure out and uh She's complaining that even though she's infected, she's at least doing something, Mm -hmm. which is true, though, because, I mean, she's doing it perhaps for her own glory. But why isn't anyone else doing anything involving like it's like, oh, I can buy more stuff once this is done or, you know, something. But no, through that. (laughs) So uh, Piper is sitting there with her feet in a water bath thing, (laughs) wearing this like feathery robe like Ric Flair or something. (laughs) Um, Phoebe is having horny premonitions off of Officer Terrible's shirt button. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck off. This is when Piper knocks down a lamp into her foot bath and electrocutes herself. (laughs) (laughs) I guess this is part of her self-destruction. Eventually she'll kill herself in her excess. Yeah. Um, so this is when Officer, uh, Dean shows up. Dumbass yeah. Dean. Yeah, dumbass Dean. Uh, he's uh, he's anger now. Uh, so Phoebe is leaning out the window to say hi to him and nearly falls out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is just lust or dumb Phoebe again. I think these are supposed to be self-destruct. I They're know, gonna kill themselves. but she's dumb enough to just <laughs> lean out the yeah. window and kill herself anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so she rushes downstairs, opens the door, and he pulls a gun on her. <laughs> Trying to figure out where the pastor is because Lucas like, is trying to. Is this role play? <laughs> Kinky. So uh, he's trying to find this pastor because of Lucas. Lucas is guiding him to do this for some reason because he'll get them back for suspending him or something. Mm-hmm. So uh, she doesn't know where the pastor is. Uh, so he tosses her into some boxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It seems uh, Piper bought a lot of empty boxes. Yeah, with a bunch of packing peanuts and stuff. <laughs> Uh, Piper realizes that he's wrecking her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> My stuff! So she tries to freeze him, but her, their powers are wonky, so it doesn't work. So he tries to shoot her, too. And he, the series of events here is, yeah, is... very confusing. Yeah, so he tries to shoot her. Phoebe tackles him. Piper dives forward, and then a delayed reaction bullet hits a light that she's diving toward. Yeah, and then it, like, it doesn't even break the light. I think it does. No, the light stays on. Oh, well, I thought it sparked or something. It sparks, but the light stays on. Uh, it's a magical spark. <laughs> anyway, so that happens. And then she, as she's diving away, she falls down the stairs. And then there's a Rube Goldberg effect with all of her <laughs> items falling into each other. Right. And yeah, then a giant crate. Her, yeah. yeah, a domino effect. And then the giant crate falls on top of her. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great episode if you want to see bad things befall Piper in particular. <laughs> Oh my goodness! 
Phoebe has been knocked out in the process of uh, saving um, Piper and I guess hit her head. Like, so I guess she's injured in some way. She's bleeding from her temple. So uh, Prue comes downstairs and starts flinging stuff at uh, the cop, including the Nintendo 64. Yeah, Prue through 64. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he gets thrown into a wall and knocked out. Um, but he, before that, he tries to off himself. So is this part of the anger, like him self-destructing? I guess so. That's I all know. I got out of that. It was kind of random. Yeah. Lucas shows up at this moment and uh, grabs Prue. I don't, because uh, the episode needs an ending. I think he's trying to negotiate with her. And that's what he's doing Yeah, he's later. trying to, like, please tell me where that pastor is. <laughs> yeah. But why does he need, the, the pastor's going to self-destruct, right? So why does he need to find him? Uh, I don't know. He needs to collect his soul, I think, was the thing. So Oh, he... so that's why he needed the pusher guy to collect souls? Yeah. Okay. Which is, no, well, why, why he should have kept him around, probably. <laughs> why do you need the box to collect the souls before? I don't know. It's like a crystal or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think the box just has the sins in it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, the box just has the sins. It has nothing to do with the soul collecting. No, but I he guess needs to, to get them with the sins I to get the I guess, souls, I guess. I guess he's I guess. collecting the sins back into the balls. <laughs> yeah. But they'll just go back automatically, right? I think so. I think he just wants it to use it on more people to get more crystals. I guess. I guess. They, is the thing. <laughs> yeah, they do theorize that this box may have been the origin of the story of Pandora's box, but right. later on they do find yeah, Pandora's but, box. And then they just do Pandora's box. So I guess not. <laughs> Stupid Leo, he didn't know anything. <laughs> so, uh, later on, uh, Piper wakes up and finds Phoebe bleeding from the ear. Pretty funny. Yeah, she goes, well, that's fine. <laughs> she tries to call Lazy Leo, but he's busy being lazy, so she has to crawl up the stairs, <laughs> horribly injured, like, Leo! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he's sleeping on on the bed with the TV on. <laughs> <laughs> he just farts at her when she gets up there, and it like blows her skin off her face, <laughs> and she dies. That would be hilarious. <laughs> he goes, "Oh no, <laughs> oh no, I'm dead again." <laughs> uh, so she crawls into the room and has to like wake him up. <laughs> And I guess the power of love cancels out their yeah, sins. Or he got Care Bear stared. Yeah, they got Care Bear stared. <laughs> um, and then Piper's like, well, I thought there was no magical way to get rid of the sins. And Leo's like, well, maybe there was a human way. And she goes, you're not a human. <laughs> yeah, none of us are human. <laughs> uh, so if they were selfless, it canceled it out. So I don't know why Prue didn't get healed immediately. I guess the pride thing, but it just seems dumb. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No! It's just dumb. I thought that also that um, the sins only infect good people. That's what they said. Like people who are, are really good get infected by this and what they're predisposed to it will infect them or whatever. So like, why did it infect certain people like the I flirty know. officer? How is he a good person? <laughs> and if they're not. already like all good, then wouldn't they just be selfless anyway and cancel it out? <laughs> <laughs> This seems flawed. Yeah, there's a bit of holes in this. So Leo does his healing magic. Uh, Phoebe and Piper were okay. Uh, Phoebe has canceled out her sin because she saved Piper. Uh, meanwhile, Prue has been uh, tied up with a flimsy ribbon at Lucas's lair. Yeah, it's like a shiny purple ribbon. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Look at slip out of that. No way is that holding her in there. <laughs> you have all these powers. You know, Let me get out my worst thing to capture you with a shiny purple ribbon. I'll tie a nice bow on the front. And you're, like, oh, you're all wrapped up as a present. I think he just ties it around a pole and then he ties does. it her hands behind her back. So it doesn't even feel like a very... No. Seems like something she could slip out of easily. Yeah. So anyway, he's like, I, I want to make a deal with you or you're going to die. And she's like, no demon has defeated me. I'm invincible. <laughs> he goes, oh, why pride? You can never defeat pride. And he's like, why did you choose her then? Why didn't he grab Piper or yeah. Phoebe? <laughs> he could have grabbed any one of these losers. <laughs> but he's like, I'll save you if you tell me where the pastor is. Um, And she... <sighs> She's like, well, I'm not going to let you go and kill a bunch of more innocents. How how is she still infected? It just feels like that's not just a pride thing to say, like, I'm not going to let you kill those innocents. Yeah, I know. I know. guess it's a Mitch Buchanan save. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she convinces him to untie her. And then she goes like, 
haha i win and then jumps into this giant pit of yeah, souls in yeah, front he of made them. this bottomless pit of your and she jumps into he's it. like ha ah, we that seems very <laughs> selfless too <laughs> i guess they're saying she was trying to do yeah, it just for her, for her pride even though she's going to self-destruct herself yeah mm-hmm. Uh, but Leo shows up just in time to save her, uh, while Piper and Phoebe toss some sins into Lucas, and that kills him, I guess. <laughs> they throw sins, and he's like, ah, and then he falls in his own hole. <laughs> oh, is that what happened? <laughs> yeah, he, he fell, he got hoisted by his own hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess that got rid of all the sins infecting people. Everyone's cured. Uh, for some reason, they figure out that that crystal is the businessman's soul. I don't know why they thought that was a soul. They're like, this must be his soul. Yeah, and then Leo says, I'll find a nice place to flesh this. Yeah. (laughs) So Leo leaves to go do that. (laughs) And the girls have a talk about pride or whatever. (laughs) Uh, Cut to P3. We have a club scene with the band Orgy. (laughs) We uh, have a long song from them because this episode might have been short. Yeah. (laughs) I feel like we got a lot of Orgy in this. (laughs) Then the girls have another talk about pride. We had to have more. Mm-hmm. Prue wonders why her selfless acts didn't save her. And then Piper says there's no such thing as a selfless act with pride. Mm-hmm. And that's why. <laughs> yeah. So Prue toasts Leo for saving her. And then Piper toasts herself. <laughs> I, I love that so much. After telling Prue off, like, yeah. oh, well, you're doing things just for your own pride. Yeah. Anyway, here's to me. <laughs> to me, Piper. <laughs> Fuck off. Here's to me. Here's to me. (laughs) So, um, Phoebe shows up in another hideous outfit. Yeah. Some sort of party smock (laughs) with, like, no size. Yeah, it's another thing that's barely staying on her. Yeah, this has definitely got, like, the boob tape in here. Yeah. And, like... It's another thing where she kind of jogs into the scene and it's very awkward. You can tell she has to be careful. Yeah, like, she has, like, some flimsy chains as the straps and one of them's already falling off her shoulder (laughs) because she has it taped to her boob, so it's not actually keeping it on. And then, like, it's gonna fall over like a bib on her if it... Yeah. (laughs) I'm sure they had some tape where they had to like readjust some things so like Phoebe did cheat on Cole in this episode right and like that's never gonna come up well she never actually had sex with anyone she made out with them didn't she not with Dean no they said they stopped her before oh okay so they didn't have sex but it was under magical influence so I mean I'm sure Cole has done worse. I do love, you know, oh, she's cured of her lust. And then she comes in this thing that's barely staying on her. Yeah. What the fuck? And then she goes like, hey, uh, so I wrote a paper about uh, how that thing with the teacher was an ethical experiment. And then I turned it into that class I was kicked out of. And then I'm back in the class now and I got a B. (coughs) Bullshit. You can't. I'm sorry, you can't no. assault someone and then that, say it was a an blatant, ethical experiment. Yeah, blatant lie. You should be She said she charged. was trying to unzip his pants with her teeth, okay? <laughs> there was a line crossed. <laughs> That's not an ethical experiment. I'm hoping she wasn't wearing her smock to this <laughs> school meeting either, because otherwise I would not believe a single thing she's saying. <laughs> That's all right. She's only wearing a safety pin. <laughs> <in there. laughs> And she's like, unless you liked this, in which case it wasn't an ethical experiment. <laughs> oh, you didn't like that? Well, that was another ethical experiment. <laughs> she, uh, she may not have technically cheated on Cole, but she was an asshole to him. Because mm-hmm. she says no man, not even Cole, is going to stand in her way. Yeah, what, what the fuck? What? He hasn't done anything in this episode. <laughs> He's, He's not even in it. <laughs> Is Cole coming and saying, like, don't finish school? Yeah. The only thing she said about Cole in this episode is, I think maybe he just wants me for sex and doesn't love me, and he's not going to stand in my way. So, Phoebe, I don't think you really love Cole. (laughs) Love isn't enough. (laughs) Love isn't enough. So, uh, they're talking about something or other. I forget the conversation. But Prue's like, I don't even want to think about sin right now. By the way, what's the name of this band? <laughs> Piper goes, it's Orgy. And then they have a laugh track yeah. to come <laughs> 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 uh, Charmed. That was actually a real cough in response to a bad joke. <laughs> 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 
Anyway, that's the end of the episode. What are your final thoughts, Phelan? It's honestly a, a great charmed episode. <laughs> Lazy Leo and Greedy Piper, wonderful stuff. <laughs> it's one of the best Piper episodes. And <laughs> it's always nice to go back after having been in Later Charm to see Prue there who cares about stuff. Yeah. She had the one weird moment where she's like, let's open the box. <laughs> but besides yeah. that, Prue's an actually proactive character who wants to help people. So that's kind of nice. Yeah. They're really missing that in some parts of the show. Once in a while, Paige was like that, but sometimes they kind of made Paige about as bad as the other two, right. <laughs> depending on how she was written. <laughs> yeah, I thought this was a really funny episode. Like, there's some goofy stuff about it, but I think, like, acceptably goofy. And I think them acting selfish, the point was they were supposed to be selfless to get out of it. So they were saying, like, it's bad to be selfish and not just, we have to have a normal life. Mm -hmm. I just can't right now. Yeah. And it was in a comical way. So, I mean, I feel like I, I liked all of the sisters, even when they were dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was nice to have uh, Daryl in the episode doing quite a bit. Yeah. Although Phoebe was an asshole to Cole, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Phelan, who was your Margoyle? Or if you have one, <laughs> who is your car man? Margoyle is Phoebe. <laughs> <laughs> Because she's doing the later season crap, complaining that Prue wants to go help people at the beginning. And then she's wearing things like safety bands. <laughs> <laughs> Just dragging that stupid coffee maker box out of a dumpster. Like, ooh, great, I always wanted one of these. <laughs> then like, eh, fuck Cole at the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she finished it off with that. So, stupid Margoil Phoebe. <laughs> Carman, I think it's obvious it's Leo. <laughs> Lazy Leo. Lazy Leo. Double car mans. Yeah. <laughs> it's gotta be Lazy Leo. And you know what? He's justified. He deserved a break. Yeah. Self-care. Amazing. <laughs> Wonderful stuff from Leo. So we had the same car man. Uh, you have a Margoyle. It's Officer Dean. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Phoebe's horrible, but he was he didn't even have like an, a magical infection to excuse no. his shitty behavior. He was just a predator. He should have been fired. Hopefully Very he deserved. was after that. I feel like it's kind of hard to come back from showing up in someone's house with a gun and <laughs> trying to murder them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how any of these people got out of this stuff. Like the pastor to yeah, holding up the fucked. car dealership. Yeah. He's just fucked. Yeah. <laughs> so he's saved, but is he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never getting into that. <laughs> and the day was saved. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'll be the end of this one. <laughs> Uh, if you guys enjoyed this podcast, we'd appreciate it if you gave us a like, subscribe, or review wherever you're listening to or watching this on. Uh, we've gotten some great uh, feedback on Spotify for podcasters. They have like a Q&A for people to say what they thought of the episode, and I always enjoy reading those. So, hint, hint! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can find us in audio form wherever you enjoy podcasts. You can also find us in video form on YouTube, youtube.com slash movie nights the series and youtube.com slash Phalus. You can support us on Patreon, see episodes ahead of time or vote in the poll for Charmed Rewinds. You can find my stuff at patreon.com slash movie nights and Phelan's stuff at patreon.com slash Phalus. Thanks to Peter Hunter for editing the podcast for us and for doing the great theme song. You can find him at Pretor Hunter on Twitter, and you can also check out his YouTube stuff. He does uh, Let's Plays uh, for, with uh, Pokemon. He also works on the Rift Tracks channel. Uh, you can find his personal channel at youtube.com slash at Pretor Hunter. Is that what you do with the custom ones? Just youtube.com slash at and then the... Anyway, he's at Pretor <laughs> Hunter. It's the same as his Twitter handle. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I think it's linked in the description. I'll put it in there. <laughs> Uh, what hashtag should we use, Phelan? Hashtag power dump of three. Oh, I was going to do that one. You stole it. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag prudette. <laughs> hashtag prude through 64. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll do us. <laughs> we'll see you next time, Charmanders. Bye.